for cheap new games be sure to hit that g2a link in the description and go and check it out hello everybody how's it going and welcome back to another video and i do just want to say again if you guys do want to support the channel the videos i make then be sure to go check out my patreon page and maybe you guys would want to support me over there but anyways without further ado let's hop into the video that was 18 seconds that was 18 seconds of me promoting things if anyone complains the gym might strangle them i might strangle i might not but i might I might strangle them. Anyways, guys, how's it going? And welcome back to another video about Assassin's Creed. And I've been dying to get back into Assassin's Creed. Haven't made a video on Assassin's Creed in a fucking long time. And today, because you guys vote for it on Twitter, if you want to be included in any of these Twitter polls in the future, be sure to follow me on Twitter. Link is in the description. And you guys can vote with the videos that I make in the future. It's always really cool to see what you guys want me to make. We're going to be talking about possible pieces of Eden that might appear in Assassin's Creed Empire if this game is going to be set in Egypt and how they could tie into the story, the first Civ, the Assassins, and the Templars. So without further ado, I've said that too many times already in this video. Let's talk about it. So there are two main pieces of Eden which could appear in Empire. So George made a video on this, Long and Fox. Go check out his channel. I'll leave his video linked on screen and in the description if you guys want to check that out. Check his channel out. For more Assassin's Creed content. However, I'm going to talk about this briefly. Um, so, there is the Scepter of a Set, which is um, an Egyptian piece of Eden. There's also the Ankh of Eden, which is another piece of Eden. Th that's the only one out of these two that's appeared in an Assassin's Creed game. So, the Ankh was in um, Assassin's Creed Rogue. It wasn't in Assassin's Creed Rogue, but they talked about it a lot in Rogue, talked about finding the Ankh, and the Ankh is meant to be located in Egypt. There have been a bunch of of pointers showing us that the game's gonna be set in Egypt. Fishy Yarpster made a video on that if you want to check that out. I'll also leave that linked in the description. But we're gonna be talking about these different pieces of Eden and I'm gonna start off by talking about the Ankh. So the Ankh is a piece of Eden that is capable of healing the sick and temporarily resurrecting the dead. So it's kind of similar to the Shroud except it doesn't work exactly like the Shroud. I'm not even certain exactly how it works but apparently it was reported that the Ankh also worked as a recording device which stored the mannerisms of a living person and be able to return those mannerisms to a corpse. So it works differently from the Shroud in the sense that the Shroud just regenerates like living cells and tissue whereas the Ankh just just restores like it takes like it's like imagine if your computer gets a virus and you saved a previous version of your computer a couple of weeks back that didn't have the virus and you want to restore that version to your new computer right here then you can do that um so you can take that 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 template of a living human and apply that to anyone you want but i guess that could also work in a bad way so you could take the template of you know a dead person and then apply that to people and kill people. I get. I feel like that could be a possible thing that could work, and that is why the Ankh is such a dangerous piece of Eden. So, throughout history, the Ankh has travelled from one civilization to another. It started off in Egypt, where the Ankh was originally owned by the goddess Isis. Not Isis, but Isis, who used the Ankh's mystical powers to protect the kings of Egypt from harm, and it was later used by Isis to resurrect her husband, Osiris, which is interesting, because Osiris was the name of that Ubisoft game that never came out that people think became Empire, so more, more Empire stuff, this is getting confusing now. So about 200 years later, Roman plunderers recovered the Ankh from the pyramid and sold it to a merchant. The Ankh then ended up in Rome, and it's been traveling kind of all over the place with a bunch of different assassins. It was in uh, the Achilles thing, uh, that book thing, and loads of stuff happened. Um, apparently he locked it in a box, so yeah, it kind of traveled all over the world. Thought it was to be in Europe in around 1350, and then it disappeared, and then in the modern day, Otzoberg in 2014 with Assassin's Creed Rogue is trying to find it somewhere in Europe. So that is the background of the Ankh. I think I did it justice, probably destroyed the law there, I apologize, but that is basically what the Ankh does. It's not at all what the Ankh does, it's where the Ankh's been and kind of what the Ankh does. It brings people back to life. If you record someone's mannerisms into the Ankh, then you can then transmit that onto someone else and they will take that template of human DNA recording that you put into the Ankh and they will become it. So you can really use it for anything you want. I wonder if like you could record like a tiger and then put the mannerisms of a tiger onto a person and they become like a tiger person, kind of like pouncing around and growling at things. I, th that'd be really, really interesting, but that's not the point. That's not, I don't think that's something that they've delved into, but I definitely researched that um, if I was going to. But anyways, that is the Ankh. That is the first piece of Eden that could appear in 
Assassin's Creed Empire because it was in Egypt for a hell of a long time and especially during the ancient Egypt period and I'm not assuming we're going to be traveling to Egypt anytime after 1350 when it was in Europe so I think it makes sense that the Ankh would appear if this is a game set in ancient Egypt uh, which would be really 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 super interesting. So the second piece of Eden is the Scepter of Aset which is apparently piece of Eden number 24. So it was originally owned by Isis, again Isis owned both the Scepter of Aset and the Ankh. Uh, not sure whether they can be used in conjunction with each other, but I think it I think it can in some way. And this was in Egypt, it was kept in Egypt. So the Scepter and the Ankh were both in the hands of Lugos, who was the founding member of the Liberalis Circulum, I think you, that's how you say it, which was a, an earlier iteration of the Brotherhood of Assassins. So they weren't called assassins at this point, just like when Adam was an assassin, he wasn't an assassin, it was just a rebellion against Juno and the first Civ. It wasn't it wasn't the assassins as we know them. The Hashashin is a different version of the assassins, but it's the same kind of order, right? So this Liberalis Circulum was an early iteration of the Brotherhood of Assassins, and the Peace of Eden was apparently lost in a shipwreck off the coast of a small island in the Mediterranean Sea. It was then resurfaced in the Middle Ages by an Italian fisherman who found the debris of Lugos's ship in the early 11th century. They then sold the artifact to an Egyptian merchant, so ended up back in Egypt, um, who sold it to members of the Assassin Brotherhood in 1250. So it's still in Egypt, the Brotherhood gave the artifact to the Mamluks in an effort to help with their slave revolt against the rule of some overlords. So a lot of stuff happened to the, the Scepter, it kind of travelled all over the place. But in the end, a boy decided to throw the Scepter into a well near Edfu, in Egypt. So apparently it was tried to be retrieved, but it didn't, and the scepter is still in that well. It's still, still in the well. It's still in the well. It's still in Egypt. The scepter of a set is still in Egypt. So to me, it makes sense that you'd be going through maybe the ancient Egyptian ancestors to discover the scepter of a set and the ankh and then in the modern day you'll go and retrieve the scepter from that well but that doesn't make sense to me in some way also because it was like 1300s when it was thrown into the well so i mean does it make sense that you'd be going to the well i don't know like because then you wouldn't need to relive the ancient egyptian memories Maybe I'm thinking into it too much. However, I do believe that Isis, Osiris, and possibly Horus will have a lot to do with Assassin's Creed Empire, possibly introducing new members of the first civilization that will be guiding our protagonist, which will be super interesting, and then their quest to discover what the Ankh does, what the Scepter does, and then the modern-day Assassin's and Templars fighting over these artifacts, which could change things, and possibly the Ankh and the Scepter could revive Juno, because, I mean, if they're going to use the Scepter or the Ankh, if they, if they want to use the Ankh, which could take the mannerisms and revive someone, it could revive Juno, possibly could. It could also bring to life these fursive bodies that they're growing, which would mean the Ankh would be extremely valuable to the Templars, and that would mean the Assassins would kind of want to stop them. The Scepter was used by a lot of rulers. It basically just grants charisma and leadership to the person who wields it. So when you wield it, everyone loves you. So it's kind of like the apple, except it's not a forced emotion. It's just like a, a byproduct of them having the Scepter. It's like, oh, they have the Scepter. Oh, wow, they're really cool. Like, it doesn't change your perception of the person. It changes the person. So when the person uses the Scepter, they become a good leader rather than putting the emotion onto the people with the apple to be like, hey, I'm a good leader, you better think I'm a good leader. So you're not changing the people's perception of you, you're literally just changing yourself by using the scepter, which is really, really cool. So by having the scepter and by having the ankle, they kind of work together, not completely like, you know, possibly like the uh, apple and the staff, but the scepter and the ankle still work together kind of a little bit. But yeah, that's basically all I wanted to say. It was kind of a bit disjointed and like I was just kind of having a little bit of a discussion with you guys talking about the Ankh and the Scepter and possible pieces of Eden that could appear, you know, in Empire and how it might come together. Um, if you want me to do a video on the first Civ, be sure to let me know because I'd love to talk about the first Civ about, you know, um, Isis and Horus and Consus and all those lads um, that could appear in Assassin's Creed Empire. So let me know what you guys want to see in the comment section below. Let me know if you enjoyed this video in the comment section below and tell me your thoughts on what pieces of Eden could appear, how the pieces of Eden could appear, how they could be used, what they could be used for, I don't know, but let me know in the comment section below, um, and I'll be sure to read all of those, and I'll see you all guys in the next one, thank you for watching, appreciate the support, it means a lot to me, and I'll see you next time guys, bye!
march over the hills But this city's had enough But if we turn and fly Does it almost feel like we will never fall And if we unite We can take this fight straight to the castle wall 